Hey everyone, in this tutorial series we're going to take a look at how you can use the Blender Auto Setup add-on with Character Creator to create your own stylized characters. In this part 1 video, we'll focus on the character model, while part 2 will deal with the hair and accessories. Let's start off by using the export option in the Blender plugin menu to send our neutral character model to Blender with the default export options. Then use the Import Character option in the Auto Setup add-on to bring the character in. Since our final character is going to have blue skin, I'll switch to Texture Paint Mode and use the Paint Bucket tool to paint the body mesh blue. To get rid of the bumpy eyebrows, we can switch to the normal channel of the head mesh material and paint over one eyebrow with X symmetry enabled to take care of both sides. Be sure to click Save All Images after this edit. Next, let's go over to the ICCC Create tab and click Edit Proportion to give our model more orcish proportions. You can fade the geometry to make the bone stand out from the geometry more for easier editing. Then proceed to scale the bones to conform to your desired final model shape. If your model's feet extend beyond the ground plane during your editing, be sure to select the hip bone and move the entire model up so the feet remain planted. Detailed sculpting will follow, so for now you can just establish a rough base set of proportions, including the facial bones. Click Apply Proportions once you're finished to exit edit mode. Now it's time to go into sculpt mode to refine the details of your mesh. It's very important to note here that we're editing the original CC topology. Be sure not to change the poly count here. Once the basic shape is complete, we can then expand the sculpting section of the CCIC Create tab to select a suitable subdivision level. Keep in mind that higher levels will require higher performance. From there, click on Setup Body Sculpt to enter sculpt mode and begin sculpting the more subtle details on a high poly mesh, and choose the required texture resolution for baking later. This is where you'll want to add in the more refined features like facial wrinkles and body musculature. Once you're finished, click the Bake button which will bake the high detail subdivision into a normal map and update the character, then automatically exit sculpt mode. In this case, we can see that a lot of the detail we sculpted earlier didn't translate well to our normal map as our previous subdivision level wasn't high enough. To further refine it, we can switch from body to detail mode, select the head, and up the level to 5 this time, then hit set up body sculpt once again. The edits we make here will only be applied to the normal map for the head, allowing for reduced wait time when baking. Once I hit bake, you can see that we've now achieved an improved level of detail, so now we can move on to giving him some more orc-like teeth. Let's select the CC base teeth mesh and hit the forward slash key to isolate it. In edit mode, we can then select the mesh of the upper teeth and then in sculpt mode, select face set from edit mode selection. Then select the rest of the mesh, which is the bottom teeth, and do the same to give us two separate face sets. Be sure to also enable topology and face sets auto masking so that when you're sculpting the shape of one set, it doesn't affect the other. Okay, that's all the sculpting will do for now. Let's move on to enter texture paint mode. Select a slightly lighter shade of blue for highlights. Then select the diffuse map for our head mesh and begin painting. I can also go a shade darker for facial crevices and add some variety with a tribal symbol on the forehead 
and a more reddish tone for the inner ears and lips. We can then move on to the body. Be aware that since the body UV mapping of CC3 Plus characters is divided into five separate parts, ensure that you've selected the diffuse map as the active one for each for seamless painting. For painting the eyeball textures, be sure to have X symmetry on, the eye mesh selected, and the cornea diffuse map as well. I'll do some basic painting here which we can refine in the auto setup add-on after we save all images. Once I'm satisfied, I can use the export to CC3 slash 4 button under the export section to export our FBX. In CC, we can then use the import option under the same Blender Pipeline plugin menu to bring in our model. Once the model is in, we can test out its animated results with a number of test motions from the timeline area. If you want to further tweak any part of your character at any time in Blender, simply follow the same procedure to export the same model via the Blender Pipeline menu. In Blender, you can use the same techniques and tools we just showed to refine every element of your character model from materials to further sculpted details on the body and hands. Finally, if you prefer to use an external image editing software to do your material edits, you can easily do so by selecting the desired mesh from your character model and either saving out all material textures and loading them later manually, or simply launching the texture map you have selected directly to your image editor from CC. Here I'm just doing some simple edits with Krita, and after I save them, it will automatically update the respective texture map in Character Creator since they are linked. That's it for this video guys, be sure to check out part 2 where we'll get into the nitty gritty on hair and accessories. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.